day. We are glad you're here, and we invite you to join us again in worship. I have only one announcement, but it is a legalese, and it is a very exciting and important announcement. Two weeks hence, there will be a congregational meeting for the sole purpose of calling, extending a call to a pastor, Pastor Havala Forgi. That will occur after worship on that day, so about 11 o'clock, depending upon how long-winded the preacher is. So next week, she will be with us. You can meet her. So the next two weeks will be important in the life of the congregation. In preparation for Holy Communion, I invite you to stand as you are able, as together we join in the thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. Our gathering hymn number 365.
Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
first reading is from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the, cover the covering that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, see, this is our God, we have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Our psalm this morning is number 118. Please join me on the refrain and I will sing the verses. Una will play it through one time. <laughs> Understand, brothers and sisters, the good news that I have proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. 
but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you believed. The word of the Lord. so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They'd been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb. For terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. Children, children, come up. Come on. Woo! Yes. <gasps> Noah. How are you? I love the shoes. The shoes are you. This is so exciting! I can barely stand it! Wait now, why aren't you excited? Didn't you get your chocolate bunnies? Do you know what day this is? It's Easter! This is the day that we celebrate Jesus rising from the dead. He was really, really, really dead really dead on Friday. But now he's alive again. And he's right here with us. Watch, this is really cool. Help me out. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. What power there is. You see? You can get everybody excited. This is a very exciting day. So, go home after you're done with church and be very excited. Let's pray. Pray with me. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for raising Jesus. Thank you for raising Jesus. And promising us, promising us life with him forever. Amen. Amen. One more time. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thank you. you go back and succeed. Excellent. Thanks. So, could Mark have found a more disappointing ending? For a long time now, most Bible scholars have agreed that the Gospel of Mark originally ended with this story of the women who go to the tomb only to encounter a mysterious young man pointing to Jesus' empty tomb and announcing that Jesus has been raised from the dead. And these women respond, how? How? So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. What a disappointing, even stupid ending. 
It's like all those bad television or movies we sh watched at the end without really ending, you know? They just leave you hanging. Or it's like this musical parlor game some friends and I made up to amuse and frustrate our other friends. We take a familiar song, drop the first note, and start the first word on the second note. Here, I'll show you. Row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Tell the truth. You wanted to finish the song, didn't you? Well, that's what happens with the gospel writer Mark's ending of this Easter story. It never really ends. Jesus never shows up. No Jesus in the garden, walking and talking with Mary. No meeting on the road to Emmaus. No Jesus coming to the disciples through locked doors. In Mark's gospel, the resurrected Jesus never shows up. There's just the empty tomb and an angel telling the women Jesus has been raised and go and tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee and you'll see him there. And the women's terrified but silent flight away from the tomb. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. See the problem? And what's with these women disciples? They utterly fail, which is surprising because, after all, they've been with Jesus all along. Besides, there have been other men in white, angels, telling other people not to be afraid. Don't be afraid, the angel says to the old Zachariah in the temple. Zach, you and your AARP card-carrying wife, Elizabeth, will soon be the proud parents of a bouncing baby boy. Name him John. And the angel Gabriel, meeting a teenage girl from beautiful downtown Nazareth. Don't be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God, and you're going to conceive and bear God's son. Name him Jesus. The angel meets a pack of shepherds. Don't be afraid, for I bring you good news, a great joy. For to you is born this day, every time... Someone starts a speech with, do not be afraid. You know what's coming is going to be good news. So the young man in white should be a signal to the women that what's coming is good news. And that's when the angel offers the best news these women could ever have imagined. Jesus, who was crucified, has been raised. He is not here. And then he gives the women clear and simple instructions. Go and tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee just as he told you. And yet after all of this, the women fail miserably, fleeing from the tomb, saying absolutely nothing to anyone. So there you have it. A resurrection scene without Jesus that fizzles away in failure. No wonder some well-intentioned monk somewhere early on after reading this abysmal ending said, I can fix that, and added a short sweet ending that while it sounds like nothing else in Mark's gospel, at least brings the story to a better end. So for the longest time, I just thought Mark wasn't too hot at writing beginnings and endings. Until one day I read somewhere that maybe we shouldn't be too surprised about Mark's ending after all because this ending actually fits into a two-part pattern that permeates the whole of Mark's gospel account. The first part of the pattern goes like this. The people who should know what's going on, like the disciples, don't. Jesus predicts his passion three different times, and the disciples just don't understand. Over and over again, they're surprised by what happens, and don't believe what Jesus says. In Mark's gospel, the disciples are dumb as a pile of rocks. They are always a disappointment. So maybe we shouldn't be surprised that these women who, please remember, 
had the courage to stay with Jesus to the end and then ventured to the tomb to attend to his dead corpse, still failed like all the other disciples. They fled away in fear and silence. The second part of the pattern goes like this. The people who do realize who Jesus is can't be trusted to tell who he is. Like the demon who possesses that young man at Gerizim. The demon recognizes Jesus and asks, What's between you and me, Jesus, son of the most high God? The demon knows who Jesus is. But can we really rely on the testimony of a demon? Or the Roman centurion who immediately after watching Jesus dies says, truly, this man is God's son. Can we really rely on the testimony of an enemy Roman soldier? So there it is. The people who should know don't. And those who do can't be trusted. Looks like we're caught in a bind. Except, except there's one other person who's seen and heard what Jesus has said and done. There's one other person who heard Jesus' predictions and watched as they came true. One other person who lives, listened to the incredible news of an empty tomb and heard the order to go out and tell. You know who that person is? It's you and me, and it's all other hearers and readers of Mark's gospel. Mark writes this open-ended gospel that threatens to end in failure precisely to place the burden of the responsibility for telling the good news of our resurrected Lord squarely upon our shoulders. Turns out Mark isn't terrible at endings at all. In fact, he's brilliant. By ending his story in this way, he invites us into the story to pick up where these women left off, to go and tell that Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, has been raised, and he's going ahead to meet us, just as he promised. Suddenly, it all starts to make sense. Mark had opened his gospel with these words, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and now he closes it with the expectation that this good news will continue through us, knowing that Jesus continues to meet his disciples in Galilee or University Place, in the first century or in the 21st century. The resurrected Jesus is always meeting us, always coming up to us from God's future, coming into our story, breaking into our lives meeting us precisely at that point where things seem the worst, not merely to fix things, but to redeem them and us, turning what looked like an ending into a new beginning, taking what looked like a failure and offering it back to us as an opportunity. Christ meets us at the point of brokenness, not just to be with us, but to do something amazing with us, and through us. We may not always see it. We may not always understand it. But Christ, the crucified and risen one, will always be there in your life, meeting you in your loves and in your struggles, in your joys and in your griefs, in your life and in your death. Joining God's story to your story, transforming your story, infusing your story with hope. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God the Father, Father Almighty, the Almighty, maker of, of heaven and earth, earth of all that is, seen, seen and unseen. We believe in the one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church, where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, Heal it. Guide us to embody Christ's love in all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Life-living God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations. Free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your ways of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through the day. Be with those who are ill or injured or frail or failing. Especially we pray for Marguerite Ogden, John Burks, Leslie Larson Martin, Pamela Wright, Lois Quayle, and those others we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. We pray for our new call of Pastor Havala and the process that we go through as a church together in the upcoming weeks. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Greet one another with a sign of Christ's peace.
God and serve our neighbor's needs through our offerings. My gift of music this morning is, was it a morning like this? It tells that story that Pastor told and we read in the Gospel of Mark over 2,000 years ago. And as I was hearing him be so excited around the children and as we bring up the Alleluia's again today, it reminds me of a geyser and the rumbling of the earth and the gathering of the power. And those of you that have seen Old Faithful see it sprout up and spread that good news. Let that be our vision this morning. trumpet underground to the earth seem to pound he is risen over and over like a never ending round he is risen alleluia alleluia was it a morning Peter and John ran from Jerusalem. 
Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Amen. of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This day we receive communion standing. Please follow the instructions of the usher. There will be two lines coming up. I'll be doing the host, the bread, and then take your side and take the cup, drink. Please put the used glasses in the bowls off to the side. Come, for all is ready. <laughs>
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen.